yeah got absolutely um thank you very much and uh, really talking to you about from the health research board in dublin um so we fund health research in Ireland, but we also commit to building a strong and enabling environment for health research and to provide leadership for the review, conduct and governance of research. Um, we have a particular interest in open research, open science, and um, want to make sure that our, research, our funded research is open, accessible and reusable um, so that it can have the greatest impact. So we are involved in the broader open research agenda, but uh, data management and sharing is high on the agenda and has been something that we worked on quite a lot. Um, over the past coming the past years. Um, so I just want to take you through some of the partnerships that we worked with and where our policy actually fits into this. Um, so, I mean, this is very complex. We've worked from 2014 to 2020. Um, we have a number of different partners that we work with um, and this has taken time to develop seven particularly that are key here that I mentioned and I just want to work you through where we actually got involved and what we've actually done with each of them in terms of sort of practical actions. So in 2014, we started off um, with research data is uh, evaluated under the research excellence part of our um, grant evaluation, and it still remains um, the same case. Um, great to hear the insights from the European Commission um, and where their thinking is going. And also back in 2014, we were uh, very exposed to the new EU policies under Horizon 2020, the EU discussions and all of the platforms and stakeholder groups that were being set up. But at this stage, we had um, no specific dedicated focus on research data, no dedicated tools that we used and no specific partners that we worked with. Um, move on to 2016, um, where we start 2016, yeah, where we started to look at uh, open science um, in greater detail. So for that, we held an open um, science conference in Ireland where we invited the uh, chair of the expert high level group on the European Open Science uh, Cloud and also the Irish uh, lead for the expert group on open innovation and all of the funders and key stakeholders in Ireland to give a position on open science and where they felt things were going to go over the next couple of years and what plans they had. And really this kicked off our national discussion we also published a report um, which we called a Dazzle report, a data access sharing um, and linkage model, which where we were looking at how to reuse and how to get access to patient data or health data um, and how this could be developed in an Irish context. Um, we joined things like the European uh, Point of Reference Health Network from the European Commission as well, which has been um, very useful to set up links with other players. Um, in 2017, then we kind of um, we we had joined uh, the Science Europe dedicated working group of funders on research data, and we've had a long term relationship with Science Europe and working um, with them in research data, which we've found very useful. We also established three kind of key partnerships which are still uh, sustainable to this day. Um, looking first at a national level, we worked with the two departments of Biz Business Enterprise Innovation and um, Department of Education and Skills in Ireland and with the Health Education Authority who oversee the performance of the universities and um, to look at the broader open science agenda and um, set up a forum and um, pulled in players from policy, library sector, research performing, research funders and other key stakeholders to have a discussion on open research. And as part of that, um, to bring all of the open agendas together. So people who are involved in international um, partnerships, people are involved in local, regional and national level discussions. Um, Patricia? Just yes. like a short thing, your slides don't seem to move um, for everyone else. We are still all on the on the um, starting slide. So if you oh, have moved them okay. across, then like that hasn't synced to Zoom. Do you want me to um, get your slides <laughs> yes. up instead? Like, yeah, yes, should we please. try that? Okay, give me a sec. I have unshared my screen. Apologies about that. Um, I, it's moving here on my machine. So yeah, you never know how these, um, you know, things work. Uh, which slide were you on? Um, just a uh, slide twenty seventeen. If that's okay. Um, I can keep talking while that's put up. I mean, the two other key partnerships that we have are the. Um, partnership with the GoFair International Office, um, 
where we worked with uh, the GoFair team to actually upskill uh, people who were already engaged in university and um, clinical trials facilities. Um, we connected them into a mentor scheme. Um, so they spent five days over in Leiden and then had access to workshops and um, developments back home. Um, we wanted them to sort of uh, be very au fait with the fair data agenda and to talk with a single voice um, and actually to network them and get to know them better. So we had one message across all of the institutions. Um, the second uh, or the third group that we worked with were F1000 researchers, the publishers, um, to bring an open public publication model for the HRB into the public sector in Ireland. So as part of that, they have a, a there's a open data underlying policy built in, um, support for researchers to understand why this is necessary, give them advice and data repositories. And as part of that, we made it easy for them to use um, so we had F1000 staff who went around the country and talked directly to researchers um, and we provided a central APC model in-house and also a national steering group of champions from each of the different institutions to actually help on that. Um, so next slide. And I don't, I, they don't seem to be moving on my end, but I'm assuming they are. So for 2018, then um, we took the um, data um, stewards that were trained and mentored through the GoFair office and wanted to give them some hands on practical experience of working with um, budgets um, and researchers. So we kicked off a fair data pilot. Um, and at this stage, uh, they went out to work with people through two of our largest funding schemes in the HRB and to sit and prepare DMPs and to look at how much it would cost um, and how it would work for, for different institutions across the system. Um, F1000 then were working with researchers to look at uh, the open publishing. And we also signed um, the DORA um, statement to support all of this work um, and to look beyond sort of journal impact factors, which we'd never really stressed um, within the HRB, just to make it explicit of how we actually did more work with our um, more work with our panels and with how we actually sort of explicitly sort of work to a uh, to recognize the underlying value of the entire research portfolio. Um, next slide. So in 20, 2019, then um, things became very busy. So we had some internal awards from ourselves. We took our Dazzle data linkage model, data linkage and shareage model, um, and we funded a proof of concept with our high performance computing uh, group working with the health service executive. Um, we ran a secondary research data um, reuse. Um, call where we funded six different partnerships to work on reuse of existing data sets. Um, and we also funded or published our policy. So it wasn't until 2019. So it's like five years after we started looking at this that we actually funded a dedicated policy in this area. So the policy that we have is for all um, calls from the 1st of January 2020, um, all have to make their, expected to make their data, underlying data available, and um, plus the materials around um, the research data, so software and other things that were mentioned by the European Commission. Um, we expect the metadata at a minimum to be available and also recognize that some areas can't be open, but there are other ways of reusing data behind secure walls, whatever. We looked at um, DMP, we request DMP at two points um, for those contracts that are successful projects, um, just post-contract and also at the end of grant. So it is a living document. Um, and as I say, we, we clarified what we would pay for, um, what our budgets are, and we also, um, included a declaration from institutions um, that people would work with some of the expertise and the data stewards that are in-house. So it was also at an institutional level. Um, we also worked with the Science Europe Working Group and were a member of the team that looked at the international alignments of the Research Data Management Guide, um, which we adopted within the HRB. Um, and we started to work with DMP online um, and prepared a HRB template um, for people to use. 
We did at that stage um, refresh the data guidelines with F1000 as well to look at data availability statements um, and to make them more fair orientated. And at a national level, we published our national framework um, on transition to open research, um, which included a um, dedicated working group on research data. Um, we have since appointed a national coordinator um, and there is now a wider working group that's working under phase two, um, which is looking at um, enabling fair outputs for research. Um, so there are lots and lots happening um, and things speeded up quite a lot. Um, just to move to 2020 then. Um, Really, 2020 has again picked up speed. So um, despite COVID, we've joined an Irish ORCID consortium to look at better use of uh, persistent identifiers um, and to make sure that ORCID's integrated into all of the work that we did. Um, we hosted an international panel to look at the DMPs that were submit submitted with the support of the um, data stewards. Um, so we had a one day session where we had um, Sarah, thank you very much for attending that and for six other leading experts from abroad to sort of look at the DMPs alongside the institutional reports that we have. Um, and we piloted the use of a new uh, Science Europe uh, assessment rubric um, to do that. We've learned a lot from the first fair involvement and we're looking at some changes in-house um, based on the work of that EU project and involvement that we have in the high level advisory group. Um, we committed to working with F1000 to look at a new publication type. So um, from 2021, we will have um, publication possibility for um, DMPs, um, which will credit data stewards, be machine actionable um, to RDA community standards um, and look at really best possible use of metadata and persistent identifiers. We're also participating in two new EU initiatives, um, the Coordination and Support Action for Population Health Research Infrastructure for COVID, which actually had a meeting, first meeting this morning, and also the Joint Action on European Health Data Space, um, which will come online and kick off in December, January this year. And we think that these two are really important and they pull in the Department of Health and the Health Services Executive as well. As I say, we kicked off phase two of our national um, coordination discussions. We have a new national coordinator appointed, uh, funded by government departments, and we're looking at landscape reports and national prioritised actions. Um, and finally, we're, we have tendered for a DMP infrastructure service um, to look at the flow of DMPs through the system um, from the HRB with the research institutions, um, with the declaration from institutions, um, with research evaluators and with the HRB itself. And we are intent to contract with the DCC for this work. Um, and then just to next slide, just to leave you with a very final um, point on some of the things that the new things that are coming down the track in um, next year. Um, so first of all, um, I mentioned the European health data space, and that is something that we really want to get a grip on. Um, we are talking to GoFair about the metadata for machines workshops and a HRB fair data profile. Um, we'll look to finalise contracts for a DMP infrastructure service. Um, we look at the first publication of DMPs um, and also uh, something new, um, working with the Central Statistics Office to look at how researchers can access the Irish COVID-19 data hub. Um, so for us, this is kind of a new game in that it brings the two legislations together and look at how they interact, the Public Sector Statistics Act and the health research regulations. And finally, we know there's lots more that we need to do in terms of uh, providing guidance and license on budgets, on exceptions, on sort of spelling out on the as open as possible, as close as necessary maxim. Um, and we hope that the DCC and the DMP online will be part of that work with us. Thank you very much.